Welcome to Star 6 Minis. My name is Tian, and today I'll be answering the question, can I get away with using cheap hobby paint on my miniatures? Shut up and sit down. So first up, we need to determine how we will stack up the paints against one another. First off, plopping or rather, getting your paint onto the palette. It's important as we don't want to be painting directly out of our pots or tubes. This is important because we want to thin our paints. Second, thinning our paints. The number one given piece of miniature painting advice is to thin your paints. So how much thinning do these paints need and how easy is it to thin them? Third, mixing. We don't want to buy every available pot in any paint producer's range. Just kidding, of course we do. But it gets expensive even with cheap paints. So we mix our own colors. Fourth, smoothness. Handling paint with a paintbrush is what we do most when painting. So the smoothness versus globbiness in feel of the application of paint is going to be a factor. Especially when we consider coverage. Which brings me to criteria number five. Coverage is arguably the most important aspect of this comparison. All paint is transparent to some degree, but a paint with good coverage will require fewer layers to cover a surface and reflect the color you want it to be. Painting two thin cones instead of six saves us time and potential frustration and errors and loss of detail on our models. Less time painting one color or detail means we won't feel like we're stuck in the hobby and it will increase our motivation to keep moving forward. And because this is Star 6 Minis, sixth, finish. I'm not going to measure the difference of matte or gloss finish as this is a preference of style, effect or taste. And most paints can be altered to be matte gloss or anywhere in between without too much effort by adding the appropriate medium. What I will be focusing on is how the color desaturates when it's dry. This means how the color will lose some of its intensity. All paints lose intensity or saturation when they dry. And here again, less is more. We want to be sure that the paint we mix on our palette is going to be the paint we see on our mini. So now that we have our criteria, uh, let's get ready to rumble! In this corner, we have contender number one, weighing in at 12 milliliters per controversial proprietary pot, Games Workshop Citadel paints. Something odd I've noticed about GW paints is that their price varies greatly. On the GW web store, they're listed as $4.50 at the time I checked, and on Amazon, they're listed as $8.60. So factor in the price you can get them at when making your decision. But in terms of the new proprietary painting pots, some people love them and most people hate them. In the next corner, we have contender number two, weighing in at 12 milliliters per conventional dropper bottle. We have Vallejo or Vallejo model color. Vallejo paints can only be bought through distributors, which means their price will also depend on where you get them from. Generally, they seem to be going for about $6 per bottle. The dropper bottles are nice and convenient, for getting just the right amount of paint on the palette. Overall, and the simplest answer is often the best one. In the last corner, we have contender number three, the underdog, weighing in at 50 milliliters per pot, cheap hobby paint. Cheap acrylic paints are everywhere and you can pick them up for less than a dollar per 50 milliliter bottle, tube or dropper bottle. Because it's cheap, a variety in terms of packaging and color isn't a problem whether you prefer pots, dropper bottles, or paint tubes. Round one, plopping. Games Workshop paints require the old scoop and ploop technique where you use a brush or other hobby tool to transfer paint from your pot onto the palette. It gets a little inconvenient when your pot starts running low and you don't always want to use your brushes to transfer paint. This is because you can only transfer so much paint on a brush and will start crimping into the ferrule of the brush if you do this a lot, reducing the lifespan of your brush. It's not a huge complaint, but it is something I have to do to start painting. Vallejo paints don't require an additional tool. 
I can just unscrew and drop paint onto my palette. Cheap hobby paints, again, coming in the container of your choice means that you can choose what is most comfortable for you. Round two, thinning. Games Workshop paints behaved as expected when being thinned down with water. It stayed under control and it wasn't too hard to keep the paint evenly thinned. Vallejo paints seemed to require less thinning, otherwise it mainly had the same qualities as its Games Workshop counterpart. The cheaper paints seemed to be a bit more stubborn when it came to creating a good consistency, with an entire plop, that is. But without too much extra mixing, I was able to get a consistency that seemed similar to Games Workshop and Vallejo. Round three, mixing colors. Both Games Workshop and Vallejo paints again behaved similarly when mixing. The paints blended well and created smooth transitions. A similar result was achieved using cheaper paints, but it did take a bit more movement of the paints, meaning I had to mix them slightly more, but not really too much. Round four, smoothness. On my scale of smoothness, from one being my high school experience of being booed off stage when our band sucked, that's rough, to 10 being my first, my last, my everything by Barry White, I'd rate GW Paints an eight and Vallejo a nine because both applied especially smooth. But I did get a definite sense that Vallejo was easier to apply. With the cheaper paints that I tried, some went on relatively smooth while others were a pain, especially the metallics. Cheaper metallics seemed to stick to my brush after only a few strokes with the brush. Round five, coverage. This is where I was both surprised and not surprised. As expected, both GW and Vallejo had similar coverage. But the surprising thing is that some of the cheaper paints had similar or even better coverage. This will definitely depend on the individual color as different pigments behave differently and all companies don't use the same pigments. The reason why I say I was also not surprised is because this was inconsistent. While some individual cheap paint colors were on par with GW and Vallejo in terms of coverage, they were not as consistent in their coverage as the other colors that I tested. The biggest difference again I noticed in metallic colors. Round six, finish. This came down more to individual colors than to the paint brand. Yellows generally seemed to dry more translucent and desaturated, where blues and purples dried well by holding their colors. The final comparison of this boxing match surprised me quite a bit with some of the cheaper paints providing better coverage and potentially a lot more value for money but you need to consider the inconsistency that you will find in these paints. Many painters prefer bigger, more well-known hobby brands because they like consistency, not only in color, but knowing how much coverage they will get out of each paint in relation to how much they thin it in order to apply it more easily. Whenever you use a paint and you need to buy more of it, it's also good to reliably get the same hue. Can you use cheap hobby paints? Yes, I've used cheap hobby paints on terrain and detailed models and the results aren't bad. I'd say some of the results I achieved with cheap hobby paint look pretty damn good. Should you use cheap hobby paints? If you're a master at playing the guitar, you can pick up a cheap guitar and still be able to sound like a master. You will just need to work harder to get the same results you would have with an objectively better guitar. Working with cheaper products will save you money, but not necessarily time, as it is more difficult in some cases to work with products of a lower quality. Will you be able to get the same quality of finish? I think so. But your paint is going to make you work harder to get there, as you can't always rely that your paints will behave in the same way. And when we have hundreds, and in some cases thousands of models to get through, an extra barrier to the hobby is not something that we need. What has been your experience handling cheaper and more expensive paints? Leave your answers and comments in the comment section below.
You can like and subscribe if you want to check out more of my videos in the future. You can follow me on Instagram or even support the channel through my Patreon campaign for it. Thanks for watching my video. This is Tian from Star 6 Minis, hoping you enjoy painting every mini.